Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And my partner steps aside. This is called channeling. And it's mysterious to many. It's beautiful to us. It is a method whereby the multidimensional source of creation, which many of you call sacredness and God, has a chance to communicate with that which you have called humanism. And in the process, we call it soul communication. And it's different, dear ones, than human communication. And so we would like to start a series of channelings that would include the explanation of what we have called soul communication. Let us begin with some basics. No, let us not. Let us begin with some basics. <laughs> we know who you are in this room. Dear ones, I want to teach. But not without first acknowledging the family. I want to teach you about you. Everything I'm going to do in this chair that my partner has allowed me to do, as he steps aside, he doesn't know what's coming. He's practiced this. He's practiced not knowing what's coming. He's practiced allowance without filters. I'm going to explain that eventually. And so I am open in this portal, which you call channeling, to allow for a third language to come flowing in that you can feel in an interdimensional way that is not with words and not linear. And some of you will. This particular channel is being published, and some of you are listening and reading. And this is open to you as well, for I know of the potential of your listening and reading. Odd as it may sound to you, this is part of the interdimensional potentials that God has as the central source. The potentials of your awakening itself, that you would pick it up and look at it. It's there. We see it as reality even before it happens. We got to start with the basics. Human consciousness is complex. There will come a day when scientists may consider human consciousness as a branch of physics because it does not follow the patterns of linear physics even the patterns of quantum physics, because it is what they would call biased in directions of personality, events, akash. It's complicated. So the, the rules would be very, very basic, but they're outside of that, which is three-dimensional physics as it is known today. And so to describe communications in this fashion goes beyond the limits of any understood science. It challenges you to think differently, act differently. Soul communication. And there are two ways. Communications from things to you that are multidimensional and from you to them, which is multidimensional. There is the difference between linear and non-linear communications. I am going to explain it the best I can with explanations perhaps I've not given before. I want you to consider for a moment you have an old typewriter. And you are typing along. And as you type along, you will see the letters on the page one after another appear. 
Pretty soon you have words and then sentences and then thought groups. This is linear communication. Now what you are beholding at the moment, whether you're reading or hearing, is the same. One word after another. In a structure for the language of my partner. It is linear. It is in a row, in a line, like the typewritten words on the page. That is linear communication. That is human communication. Nonlinear communication would be as follows. Now pay attention, for this is going to be what my partner calls a stretch. <laughs> Pretend that the typewriter is stuck. And you can type all day long, but you're only going to have one image. Every letter is going to show itself over the other. You type away, it does not advance at all. It simply types over itself, one letter. Now, what would you see on the page, dear one, at the end of a long letter to a friend? A smudge. All the letters piled up, inking over one another. You'd have no idea. You would look at it and you'd be sorry that the typewriter failed and you hadn't noticed. Now consider for a moment somebody comes along and they have non-linear communication skills. They would look at the smudge and see the letter. <laughs> And that's as clear as I can make it. They're conceptual. They would see the thought that went into it. They would see the linearity outside of its linearity. The letters are there, dear ones, but they're not there in linear form. They're all together as a group. Therefore, a nonlinear communicator will see the smudge and see the entire letter. Now, there's an attribute of this, and it's difficult to describe to you. And it's, it's out of the logic that you would have, and yet it is. And so let me try to explain it. My partner goes slowly. So this will be understood. When the conceptual person looks at the smudge, they're looking at something that exists already. A letter has been typed. So they're not making something up. They are simply reading something in a non-linear way. The letter has been written, oddly, all in one smudge, but it has been written. There is an attribute of a non-linear mind, which you call autism, that you should study. There are many autistic human beings who can tell you the day of the week of a future date in any year, in any month. If you would ask that person, what is the day of the week in May of 2035? And they would come up with it, maybe a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And it would be there, and they would do it instantly. You would gasp at their computational efforts. And here is the answer. Computation has nothing to do with it. It's not a formula. It's not math. It exists. And so it is known. You can go to any computer that is calendar friendly and find that information because it already exists. It's a concept that has already been developed and known. The nonlinear mind, therefore, is able to go to it and interpret it instantly because they see the concept. They're not calculating anything. Now you know the difference between linear and nonlinear. There's a lot of communication that wants to come to you from all manner of sources. So I'm going to start the list. Channeling is what you're hearing right now. My partner has practiced it for 23 years. When he started, it was ugly. <laughs> for we're not speaking to him in a linear fashion. You see, he is a master interpreter 
of nonlinear concepts coming through his pineal. Now I am speaking to him in his real time and he is interpreting. So it sounds like a flow of linear words, but it's a thought group that I keep giving him over and over. You see, we have practiced together. We both had to adjust. When we started, I gave him the concept like the letter in one smudge, like that. And then he had to remember what it said and give you the channeling, and he wasn't very good at it. And then we realized that if we kept giving him the smudge over and over, that he could interpret it in a linear fashion. And so we repeat the concepts. By the way, I just gave you the secret to graduate intuitive thought. Ask for spirit to repeat the intuitive thought. <laughs> Now, my partner didn't even teach that today, and I had to come along with the obvious. Repeat it. That should be your request to spirit when you don't understand what it is. Repeat it. And have that intuitive thought then repeat it so that you could grasp it and see it, for it is beauty and it's clarity, and we will. We want to meet you in between the linear and non-linear veil. Do you realize this is why spirit has talked to humanity in quatrains and in metaphors forever? That's all we have. And the interpretation of these things then become puzzles. People reading scripture, why can't you talk normally, spirit? Because <laughs> we are not linear. The channeling is not linear, but it sounds like it is because we continue to repeat the smudge. And even this channeling, all of it, as long as it is on the clock for you to see, as long as it takes, is all being given at the same time to my partner over and over so he can see it. And so we begin. What is this channeling? It is the pineal opening up and giving my partner these communications and allowing him to interpret him through his experience, interpreting them and giving them to you. It is a form of communication that is open to all humanity and you don't have to call it channeling. You can call it whatever you want to and every single human being is open to learning it. Not necessarily for others. How about just for yourself? Some call it automatic writing. This is a communication portal that opens through the pineal for you, and it is not from the brain. And we've said this before. This is soul communication. This is multidimensional communication. It has nothing to do with synapse, nothing. It is not a brain function. That's why it's hard. Now, there's many kinds of communications from many things. Let us speak of the difficulty yet again. Anything I'm going to mention from now on in this section of others communicating to you must be interpreted. What else is there? There are many things. So I'm giving my partner a list and he can choose what he wants to talk about in the time that he has. Personal. Let's talk about personal. How can you hear what spirit or any other multidimensional source has for you when it doesn't come in a linear fashion? And my partner gave it today, and the answer is through practice of recognizing intuitive thought. And not, number one, not trying to interpret it with your intellect. Do not let the synapse of your brain Get in the way of God. <laughs> Do I have to say that again? You will learn to put it aside. What is it that my partner had to learn as the engineer in order to channel? To get out of the way. To stop analyzing if it's him. Is he making it up? Is it from his brain? Or is it bigger than that? So for you personally, dear one, this is what you have to do. Now, there's many sources 
other than that which you call God that wish to speak to you in this fashion. We'll get there. But if it's a non-linear source, it's going to come through intuitive thought, not synapse. Where do we go next with this? <laughs> hmm. Let's talk about animals. You love them, don't you? And what do you know about animals? The ones you have and are in love with, that you call pets, have personalities. And they can talk to you. And what does that sound like, dear one? What does their voice sound like? And you go, well, well, crying you already know they don't have a voice. Oh, really? Then how do they talk to you? Now it gets good, doesn't it? Through concepts. Their conceptual thought groups are available to pick up, guess where? Through your pineal, <laughs> which is the interpreter of multidimensional things in your body, not your brain, and will give you the same thought groups they have. And some of you are good at it. There's ones who are listening to this right now, called animal whisperers. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Why do they call it whispering? I'll give you my interpretation. Because it's not linear. Because it whispers to your mind through the pineal and comes in the thought group very softly, all at once, like a smudge. You know what the dog is thinking. You know what the cat is thinking. You know what the horse is thinking. The requests they have, perhaps the distress they have, perhaps the celebration or the love. Now this is easy for you. Easy. Because you all have felt this. You know what I'm speaking about. This is not different than the same muscle that you're going to use in meditation to listen to God. It's the same apparatus of your system. So is it true that communicating with animals is soul communication? Yes! <laughs> Theirs to yours. And if you're good at that, why not go then and not doubt yourself? And be good at that which is within your, within your own higher self. Now I just gave away who you're communicating with. <laughs> Your higher self is that self which vibrates higher than you are. It's part of your soul group, the core. And this is what gives you information from the other side of the veil, which you call angelic, sacred God. It's the same as in animals. Did you know, here's another one in the list that I'm giving my partner. Did you know that actions are communication? When my partner speaks about the grid, and when you sense that which is crystalline grid, the battlefield, what has happened there, it's concepts. And it's coming through the pineal. And it's thought groups, not linear communication. Some of you are good at that. You are proud that you can feel energy where you go. You can feel the energy of a group. You can feel the energy of the land, which is the crystalline grid. You can feel the energy of a situation. And you're good at it. What are you feeling? This is soul communication at its best. It does not come from the brain. It is not intellectual. This is physics. You are picking it up through the pineal, interpreting it, and you get the information. Something has happened on the ground where you are. It may take you to your knees. That's communication. Beautiful. But you had to interpret it. Why is it that the communication which is so personal to you is the hardest to interpret? You with you. This is what the teaching is today, trying to open that up. There are many other kinds of communication. What about those other things and what I'll call universal communication? When you walk into the forest, 
and the trees talk to you. What's their voice sound like? <laughs> Am I getting through to you? You are able to hear these things in your own way. They are not synaptical. It's another kind of physics. It's soul communication, and they're talking right to that part of your consciousness, your merkaba, your quantum field that makes sense to you because it's conceptual. Are the trees in trouble? Are they crying? Are they celebrating? And there are those of you who are hearing my voice and in this room who know the answers to all of those. Crying, is it true that in the forest there are what you would call divas? Here's my answer. Are you kidding? Of course. <laughs> Of course. What are they? They are multidimensional aspects of Gaia. I love it. When human beings cannot get that, they want to dress them up and put outfits on them, make them little, call them different things. <laughs> Give them voices, put them in movies. <laughs> they're beautiful, and you know they are. And they're everywhere. Go into the forest. They'll talk to you. Sit down in the grass and let them land on you. Now that's linear. I want you to picture that, and they will. They're not landing anywhere. They just are. They're part of the soup that is Gaia, that is Mother Nature, the personality of the love of the planet for humanity as it walks into it. It's a celebration of your life. You're not going to get bad things from a diva. You're not going to get bad information from hugging a tree. You know that, don't you? What does that tell you about how Gaia feels about you? That's just a few of the things when it comes to the subject of communications to you. Let's talk about, let's talk about the other one, and then we'll close it off. And we'll continue tomorrow. Now, my partner, it's important that you record all of these things and present them so that those who are not here tomorrow can hear the rest of the story. That is your challenge. <laughs> what about you communicating the other direction? Now, you have got linear communication. That's all you've got. You do not have necessarily the tools for multidimensional communication. Now you can develop them, and many of you have, but in general, you've got linear communication. So what about you with spirit? Well, let me tell you the truth. Dear ones, we don't have any trouble <laughs> understanding you because we are the master interpreters. <laughs> we know exactly what you're saying. And it doesn't matter whether you're thinking it or whether you're saying it or you're just thinking about thinking it or saying it. We know. Because we're with you all the time. The higher self which vibrates above the corporeal self knows the psyche of your mind. And when you sit to meditate, we know what you're going to do before you do it because the potentials are there. You're already thinking about it before you do it. I'll give you some rules. Stop giving us laundry lists of what you want. We know what you want. Sit and say to us, Dear Spirit, tell me what it is you want me to know. Because we're already on board with everything in your life. Do I have to say that again? We're already on board with everything in your life. Come to us and let us talk to you. Just let us talk. And try to interpret the thought groups that come first without analyzing. Get used to this. But as far as you talking to us, it doesn't matter how you do it. Now, there will be those that say, well, there has to be wrong ways to do it. No, there aren't. No, there aren't. Well, well, Cryon, what do you think about religious groups who have to face a certain direction or have a prayer rug or, or wear something special? And what I say to you is, let them do that. It honors God in their culture. It honors God. Is there anything better than that to prepare them to talk to us? The same love goes into their communications as yours. 
cultural differences between you do not compute to the other side of the veil, for we see a human as the human, the corporeal piece of God that you are. It doesn't matter what you're wearing or what you're sitting on. Is that clear? There is no wrong way to speak to the to creative source. Well, maybe crying there isn't, but I've had a few times when I was yelling at God. <laughs> and we heard you, but we did not hear the yell. That's linear. This is hard to explain. What we heard is loving frustration. <laughs> loving frustration. We heard the yell. We didn't see the anger. You weren't angry. You were frustrated. And that's the time when we want to surround you the most. The more you yell at God, the more there are angels around you wanting to hold your hand and take you if you'd let us. Next time you decide to yell at God, would you also open your heart and let us hold you for a while? Is that okay? In the moment of greatest frustration that you have where you have no answers at all and you can't figure it out, can you just be held? Is that all right? Because we're here for that. Old soul, you got to get used to this communication. This is so available. Actions are a language. How you behave talks to the crystalline grid, talks to the Gaia grid. What you think talks to the, to the magnetic grid, which we have called the seat of human consciousness. Without you saying a thing, that's another way of communicating to everything around you. What you say out of your mouth in linear fashion, the cells of your body hear. How many self-help gurus have had to tell you that you're going to bring to you what you say? Why is it that hypochondriacs bring to themselves the very diseases that they fear the most and talk about? Because the body hears them and gives them what they ask for. The body is listening. The grids are listening. Even the human beings around you are listening. Do you spin in drama? Here we are again. Is this attractive to other human beings? Have you ever thought about that? What do you want to show somebody about your belief system? That you're out of balance? And that they ought to do what you do? Think about it. How are you presenting mastery to humanity, old soul? What have you learned through all of the ages that you brought to the party today? And is it spinning? Or is it love? We're crying. It's easier said than done. How do you stop spinning? I just told you. If you'll open your heart and allow these things to communicate, it's going to start a peaceful countenance with you. This is called awakening to spirit. Getting out of the old habits and the old fears and starting to claim the part of the old soul which is you, available to you and to humanity for those around you. So much to be told about how you communicate with others. Multidimensional communication. Those of you who are good at speaking to the animals, not listening, but speaking to them have developed thought group communication. You're already on board. For the best kind of soul communication there is, you're starting to think out of the box. You're looking into the animal's eyes and you're giving them pictures, aren't you? And they're getting it, aren't they? <laughs> it ought to tell you this can work. Humans can develop multidimensional attributes and characteristics that are entirely consciousness driven, sent through the pineal to anywhere you want. There are helpers around you, we've told you. Do I have to list them? Entities, 
groups all around you that are not from here. Not just the Pleiadians, Octurians, Orions, Hawthors, from Sirius, uh, endless. And you know what they have in common? Non-linear thought. <laughs> and you can communicate with them the same way you do with animals. Dear human being, soul communication, we're going to open the door before we close to this and tell you this is something we want you to consider and to study, to know about, to realize. Don't let it be mysterious. I've just given you the attributes of to and from, or from and to. In the next section, I'll continue with another subject. What is it that blocks it? <laughs> what are filters? What can you do to enhance it? Soul communication is part of what the old soul must get into and learn. And the answer of what it's going to create is balance on the planet and peace on earth. It begins here. It begins with understanding, demystifying. There is structure in these things. There is a benevolent system in these things. There is common sense in these things. We invite you to find it, for it will create spiritual evolution on this planet, led by the very ones who are reading and listening to this voice. Family, that's the lesson for today. It's beautiful, isn't it? All we want to do is communicate. And it's time to get on with it. Explaining how it works, the suggestions of how to make it better, even the very thing you hear now, which is channeling. Demystifying what some have called spooky, unnatural, weird, just because it isn't linear. Will stand by for lots of things that aren't linear. And the one that is the greatest of all is love. I can't explain it, can you? Emulate it. And so it is. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Crying of Magnetic Service. Traditionally, in a meeting like this, the message in the channeling would be briefer than a full channeling and a teaching like yesterday. And that will be true today. We call it part two of soul communication. It is the shorter part, but a profound part. Yesterday was filled with instruction of how spirit would communicate with you beyond spirit. The other things on the planet which are non-linear, perhaps multi-dimensional and conceptual, which would communicate to you. We turned it around and, and talked to you instructionally about that which is you communicating to the others. And even mentioning, perhaps, who the others are. It's bigger than you think. There'll come a day when there will be acknowledgement that the planet is literally filled with life force that is invisible. And some of it is conscious. There would be a a recategorization of things like the grid and what it is to communicate with the crystalline or the magnetic or that which is Gaia itself. Because you communicate in a way that perhaps is not linear. You don't get messages. But it's still communication. 
And so all of that was yesterday, and there was a great deal to talk about. Today is more personal. You've come here today, a smaller group of you, more intense it is, to talk about how you can improve yourself, but it becomes something more. Really, you're talking about communication. Soul communication can also be and is you with you. Is it not true, dear ones, that the entire purpose of today's lesson was how to get in touch with the nonlinear parts of you? That is soul communication. Is it possible, can you even conceive it, that you are split into many parts? And part of balancing and becoming that which is the attribute of the masters is getting in touch with the parts of you which are sacred. That's soul communication. And so everything we say from this point on applies to that as well. My partner today described what it might be like to build that bridge to your body intelligence, the innate in your cellular structure, which is nonlinear. That's part of the puzzle. It's not necessarily you talking to the higher self or you talking to God. If God is inside you represented by these nonlinear aspects, which we call innate and higher self, indeed, this is soul communication. The puzzle is grander than you think. There's beauty in all of this. That's what I want to talk about. There's beauty. The system is benevolent and is ready to work. Did you hear that? It's ready to work. Let me take you back a bit. How many lifetimes have you slogged through with old energy? Slogged through. You pick yourself up and it knocks you back. You just get started and it kills you. You come back again and you're enlisted in a war and it kills you. You come back and you awaken. You become even shamanic and it kills you. How many lifetimes has it been where all you can do is hold your own. And survival is a word that means something else to the old soul. Survival in an old energy with high consciousness. This is ending, all of it. And the planet is not going to suddenly become higher in consciousness, dear ones. Instead, the systems around you, which know who you are, are going to start working closer with what you know. <clears throat> it becomes easier to survive. It becomes easier to believe what you believe. And to start to make a difference, it's going to be easier to balance. We've used the word over and over. Many times, those in esoteric belief systems go into certain categories because it's survival. It's easy for you to be a hermit, speaking even to my partner. If you don't have to show your light, it's easier. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? Or when you open the door and the light spills out and everybody looks at you. What's wrong with this picture? Because in the past, it's meant your demise. So in this energy that is starting to develop on the planet, 
we got some news. And the first thing we would love to give you are what we will call the rules of the Creator. <laughs> we have rules. Now, we don't call them rules. It even gets more specific. We'll call them laws. They are not violatable, nor would we want to. Spirit is not like a human. There is not a consciousness that is linear, that has rules or laws. It's the best way we can tell you how things work. The laws of physics are absolutes, and they have to do with the operation or the process that you see in reality that matter then approves of. The laws of physics are not conscious laws being obeyed by a consciousness. They're the laws of physics. We have laws of spirituality when it comes to human beings. And let me tell you what they are. First of all, they are honoring, and they are beautiful, and they are benevolent. Would you expect anything else? From the creative source would you here they are we stand apart from you we stand apart from you unless you ask us in and I want to tell you that none of us like the laws because the majority of humanity in survival mode and old energy, the majority, don't let us in. Can you imagine your children suddenly becoming different and not recognizing you? Can you imagine them wandering around running into walls because they can't see? And you've got the only flashlight. And you love them. And they never call out for you because they don't know your name. They don't remember who you are. You birthed them. Or you care about them. Can you imagine that? That's our law. And when you open your hand, and your heart. Old soul, you have a lineage of Akashic remembrance. And when you begin to open the door that asks, is there more? You allow us in. That's the law. Now, it's not just us. And this is where it gets good. It has to do with what you have called the sensitivity of energy with a human being. You walk into a battlefield where the crystalline grid has remembered what happened. Now, this is changing, and we've told you. But you walk into that battlefield, and you feel it, and there'll be somebody with you who goes, what's wrong with you? And you'll go, don't you feel the energy? And they'll go, what? What's that? And you'll say, something happened here. Don't you feel it? And they'll say, no, I don't. And they'll look at you like perhaps you're, you're pretending. Or you want attention. Or you're oversensitive. And you know better because you feel it. What is the difference between you and them? The answer is this, you're letting it in, and they're blocking it. We're going to talk about blocks in a moment. Some of you will walk into the forest and will feel it talk to you. It will surround you with its love, with its beauty. The trees are pushing out oxygen as a benevolent system of photosynthesis. It wasn't always there. Can you imagine a planet without it? <laughs> you wouldn't live long. What a system. The plants give you oxygen. 
and you give them carbon dioxide. What a system. You look around, and science will say, well, it happened by accident. What a system. An accidental cooperation of nature and humanity. <laughs> they know who you are. You walk into the forest and you feel it hug you. And somebody's next to you with a chainsaw. <laughs> they don't care. They don't feel it. It's a resource. What's the difference between these two human beings? There's no judgment here. I'm just asking you, what do you think the difference is? You're letting it in. When you make the decision that it's okay to feel it, it'll be there. Most don't. They block it. The law, it will come to you with allowance. The moment you open, the door of allowance lets you begin to feel it. Those are the rules. It's not just us. There are a number of what we would call benevolent energies on this planet represented by groups with names that you have given them that cannot get through to you unless you allow it. That's their rule as well. It's the same as ours. And you're not going to hear from the Pleiadians or the Octurians or the Syrians or the Hawthorne or those from Orion unless you open to that possibility there could be more benevolent groups which represent your DNA essence who know who you are and are here to help in so many different ways the amount of help you have on this planet is staggering and the majority of humanity will not allow it now that's where the old soul comes in. You're already tuned up. If you're hearing my voice, you're allowing it. Well, let me tell you what's going on, dear ones. There are various degrees of allowance. But all you have to do is open the door and it begins. The energy of 2014 and beyond is going to start creating new paradigms on the planet, both for discovery, for awakening, for realization, for aha experiences, and they will not all be spiritual. Science will discover many things that will ask questions and open doors, and they won't be spiritual. But you know, they all lead in one direction. The discovery of new physics, of consciousness that has been hiding, premises that change the rules, rethinking the puzzle of reality, and eventually leading to even asking the question about soul communication it's real the doctor is operating on a patient chemically he's out perhaps his heart has been removed and is pumping separately and a machine is keeping him alive but his life essence is hovering above the operating table watching it all. And some have reported it and some have not because they don't have the allowance of soul communication. There is so much here and some of it is very provable. With time and these things start opening up, you're going to have to give allowance to an entire set of new concepts about life and one of them will be this life is eternal separated from corporeal consciousness is forever 
when the earth starts to look at that and discover that, it will turn the corner of all spiritual belief. How far away is that? Far, far away. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You'll be there. Don't worry about it. You'll be there. Don't put a time limit when you're going to be there. And the issues will be the same, except the next time you awaken, dear one, in this life, you're going to remember who you are. Much grander than you have this time. And it won't happen later in life. It'll happen right away. And we talk about blocks. We talk about filters. The main block to allowance to you feeling this or believing it is tradition, what you've been taught. What you have been taught holds an energy over you where you have to rethink something that to you has been sacred and precious because the authority, whatever that means to you, has taught it to you. Is it parents? Is it school? Is it teachers? Is it those you love and admire and adore? And when you do, you think that they have the absolute truth. It is not a judgment or a mistake to tell you they don't. They had the best they had with an old energy on this planet. They taught you the most that they, they knew. And here you are, learning something that's even newer. How do you get through that? The answer is this. You've got to suspend that which you have been taught and give allowance for something different. Some never get through that. <coughs> they cannot. And it remains what we have called a block. Now, if you can get through some of it and not others, let us say, for instance, that what you have been taught fights with one or two aspects of the esoteric system that we have been describing the last two days, but you're open to others. Is that too difficult for you to believe? No. You, your human psyche is compartmentalized. And so you may be wide open to one kind of thing, and yet another, you're still undecided. That is a filter. <laughs> now, how does a filter then change your life? What happens is it keeps you from seeing those aspects properly or in the, in the truth that they are, but gives allowance to the other things. And so you might say it skews <laughs> what you do and how you do it. I think it is best seen, dear ones, in healers, psychics, and channelers. Things they cannot do or will not do or cannot understand, things that they are good at, things they are bad at, <laughs> that's the filter. A channeler, for instance, who will sit before you and you will feel that they have good and real information in certain areas, but other areas they don't. They will give you future messages, messages about that which is your future, and then they won't happen. They will give you time and date, and they won't happen. And what would you think about a channeler like that? You would think, well, maybe they're not channeling. What if I told you they were? But they've got a filter. And the filter is this, that they have been taught that the future is going to be filled with doom. <laughs> and it's hard for them to shake that. So they'll give you channeling. But in the process, they will go out and look at the potentials of what's going to happen on this planet. And let me be clear, there are a lot of potentials. And there's weak ones and strong ones. The strongest one 
is that you are cleaning things up, the new energy is upon you, and you are headed toward a peaceful planet. That is the majority potential. That's why I'm here. I hope you get that clear. But it doesn't mean that there are no other potentials. There are some potentials that probably will not happen in a million years. They are old potentials, but they're still there. And the channeler will go and see them and never see the bigger picture because the filter is doom and gloom. And they will come back and give you doom and gloom. That's a filter. What's another filter? Well, now we're going to touch home. If I started asking you questions personally, I know you. Do you believe this is real? Yes, I do. Dear ones, do you believe you have an Akash that has multiple past lives? Yes, I do. That's pretty good. You're giving allowance, are you not? You're starting soul communication. Dear ones, are you ready to go to the next level? Yes, I am. And then you proceed. And the first thing that starts to happen is your pineal ramps up to give you wonderful intuitive thought and the filter kicks in. And the filter is this, you don't deserve it. Why is it that humanity will look at a master's life and then instead of listening to what the master taught them, they will somehow decide that in order to worship and honor the master, they have to emulate the suffering that the master went through. That's a filter. Do you see it? And so what you have built around the love of God is you must suffer. And that doesn't make any sense. It's a filter. Some of it right, some of it not. And you can tell. This is not judgment, dear ones. This is simply stating the way things work. Humanity looks at certain things without the structure or the knowledge or the wisdom truly of what it means, how to grasp it, or what to do with it. The best thing I can give you to eliminate the filter is forget everything you are ever taught. Forget it and start over. And the first thing I want you to do is to sit there alone and ask the question, am I loved? And let us take your hand and go from there. Let's go to kindergarten and start with that one, dear old soul. And the blocks will start to disappear, and the intellect will get out of the way. In order to give you this message, my partner had to learn to cast off the filters. And they were strong. And the filters told him, this is not the way it could be. Scientifically, it doesn't make sense. In 3D, things don't work this way. You're pretending to channel. Filters. And slowly, they were removed. The biggest one, lack of self-worth. My partner says, if I open my mouth, I'm going to make a fool of myself. Well, he did. And he got over it. And it got better. And it got better. You know how we got to him? We got to him through his heart. And then he had to weigh the difference between his brain and his heart, and his heart won. <laughs> and that is the invitation. Now you know the rules. We're there. You know the blocks. Tradition, past teaching, old energy thought. There is no judgment 
to what you didn't know based upon an old energy that never let you know it. How could we ever be, ever be in judgment at all of a human being for what you are and what you do? How could we ever blame you for not seeing light when you're in a dark room? This is not a message where we're telling you you were wrong and now you're right. This is a message that says you were in the dark and now the light is being turned on. Old soul, this is what you do. You carry light. You may have to start over. Healer, you hearing this? I know who's here. You want to know why it's not working? I know who's here. Because the old energy had you doing things that you're not supposed to do now. Oh, you can continue it. It's not about shoulds, but we want you to do it with results. <laughs> we want to double it, triple it. Listen to this and don't misinterpret it. You don't have to be poor to know God. Are you all right with that? You can earn a living and stand tall and say, I'm a healer, I'm a psychic. Any of those things. And you can have an energy exchange, whether it's barter or whether it's legal tender for your services. And who told you you couldn't? Tradition. If it's spiritual, it's supposed to be free. Well, this is free, and for those who are listening to this, for free. Are you feeling the energy? Are you getting the message? Those who offer services can charge, just like any other services on this planet. And it's appropriate, and there's integrity in it. Let the messages be free. Let this energy be free. These are the instructions that I've even given to my partner to know the difference what to charge for and what not to charge for. And I can give you this information because it's part of the new energy when we're talking practical things. And you need to know to demystify. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to be poor. You can stand tall. Old soul, it's time to join the rest of this planet in be balanced. Let them see your balance. We've said that before. Eliminate these blocks, these filters, and these things which would stand in the way of our hand out to you. You take the hand of spirit, your higher self starts to talk to you. It's going to give you information that's going to give you extended life and health. You won't have to worry about survival. If you stop the blocks and open the filters. That's the message of today. But it's also the message of yesterday and tomorrow. Because there's so many of you, you need to hear it many times. Now I know who is here. I know who listens and who reads and who watches. So I know the stubbornness of the human brain. So I'll say, if not this lifetime, the next. We're very patient. And so is the earth. There may be hiccups along the way, dear ones. There will be those of you who will think perhaps civilization is going backwards. Because when you recalibrate an entire earth, and you recalibrate consciousness, there will be a lot of those who go into frustration because the old energy doesn't work anymore. And you're going to be splits. You're going to see splits in everything, even the new age. I've told you that. This message will not sit well with those who are invested in tradition. Given in love this day. Weigh it for what it is. See 